Sheep raising in Nova Scotia dates of way back to the beginning of her agriculture. Sheep are very important animals because they provide both food and clothing. Sheep are easier to raise than any animal on the farm. Yet just because they are so easy to raise causes some farmers to neglect them and leave them to forage for themselves on eroded pastures so that the quality of the lambs becomes very poor. Poor farming practices lead to eroded pastures and deficiency in the soil so that all farm animals suffer. Poor soil management gives poor crops, which in turn result in poorly fed livestock. Even hardy sheep cannot thrive here. They become diseased. They are neither docked nor castrated. Their wool becomes low grade caused by burdocks and spruce needles. A mistake often made by the farmers is to allow their rams to run at large in the fall of the year. If the ram is of poor breeding, rangy and thin like this one, it will produce poor quality lambs. And dead lambs may be found by the farmer when he tends his sheep some spring morning because the ram has been at large and the farmer did not know when to expect the young one. And if the sheep are kept in cold, drafty barns, early born lambs will have poor chances of living. If lambs are raised under bad management like this, they are in poor condition for marketing in the fall. Until 1917, marketing methods did not help the farmer. He had no alternative but to sell his lambs to a drover who didn't consider paying him for quality on a graded basis. So there was no incentive to improve. Note the diseased condition of this lamb. It suffers from undernourishment and parasites. In Canada generally from 1917 until 1939, there were three methods of buying lambs, so much a head, so much a pound, and grading by scale. 70 pounds or over was top grade, 60 to 70 medium, 60 and under light or poor. But these methods of buying didn't work out for it is impossible to correctly grade a lamb before the pelt is removed. And rough handling of the lamb often results in bruised flesh, which lowers its value. To encourage the sheep industry through improved marketing conditions, the Nova Scotia Department of Agriculture requested the federal department to put rail grading of lambs into effect. Rail grading means that the lambs are weighed and graded after they are killed by an independent, qualified person. For instance, the finish of this lamb is poor. It could not rate more than a C grade, and a C carcass lamb is usually light, ranging in weight from 20 to 30 pounds. Since the grading is done in a nearby town or his own community, the producer can compare poor with top quality lambs and see where the quality falls off. This carcass weighs about 46 pounds. It is well fleshed and has a good finish. It is A grade and will net the producer a good price. A duplicate record of weight and serial number of lamb is made and the tag remains on the carcass to identify it until it is marketed. This experiment started in Nova Scotia in 1939. Since then, C and D grades, so common before rail grading was introduced, are comparatively few, and the great percentage of lambs now falls into top grades. In the killing plant, the carcasses are government inspected and stamped. After the carcasses are inspected, they are branded for consumer identification, blue for B and red for A grade. Rail grading of lambs has proved beneficial to both the consumer and the producer. Note the grade of lamb the butcher chooses.
Note the satisfaction of the consumer. Note the interest the producer takes in examining the different grades. A grade must be well finished and deeply fleshed. The B grade lamb shows blueness over the loin due to lack of flesh and finish. From loin to shoulder, the backbone has very little flesh. There is an all over lack of finish and the shoulder is sharp and bluish. The C grade lamb has a cat ham, thin shallow loin and very pronounced shoulder and lacks finish throughout. The D grade lamb is entirely unsatisfactory for trade, extremely thin, lacking flesh and finish throughout. C and D lambs discourage the consumption of lamb and help to reduce the price of better grades when offered in large numbers and make sheep production unprofitable. It works out like this. An A carcass weighing 46 pounds at 31 cents nets the farmer $14.26, while the average D carcass on the same market nets only $2.96. To bring their lambs up to top quality, Nova Scotia farmers introduced a livestock improvement policy. The first step in sheep improvement is healthy animals. The basis of this is parasite control and proper feeding and particularly good pasture. In the pasture, there should be shade so the flock can be sheltered from the sun. A good ram, strong, vigorous, blocky, and low set is necessary for a good flock as breeding has a very definite effect on the conformation of the carcass. The sheep barn should be well lighted and properly ventilated. With a long runway to the feeding pens, for sheep need plenty of exercise. They should have a well-balanced ration throughout the winter months, with grain about a month before and after lambing. The breeding season is a very important period in successful sheep husbandry, the ram should have his own pen and be allowed to run with the flock a few hours each day, the ewes flushed. Then a good lamb crop will be assured. The flock should be dipped in the spring and fall to rid them of external parasites. Internal parasites live in the intestines of the sheep and when heavily infested are very harmful to them. For many years, Dr. W.E. Swales, Dominion Animal Pathologist, studied these tiny parasites, particularly the nodular worm, difficult to control. After much study and research, he invented the phenothiazine pill. When the pill is placed in a glass of water, it explodes. This explosive action is increased when it mixes with the digestive juices in the stomach and intestines of the sheep. It is particularly effective in destroying the nodular worm. Through the efforts of Dr. Swales, the sheep industry of Canada as a whole has benefited. Agricultural field men visit the farmers and show them how to detect diseased sheep, how to give the pill, and how to repeat the treatment when needed. Dyer is one of the many farmers carefully following the new sheep improvement program. He is shown that a pale eye indicates stomach worms, that sheep should be examined particularly in July and throughout the summer months. He is shown how to properly give pills to destroy the parasites and improve the health of the sheep. He is told about the importance of a balanced diet for the lack of minerals causes great harm particularly when the sheep is developing her lamb. Therefore, a balanced ration is very necessary if healthy lambs are to be produced. So the field worker guides the farmer at critical times.
The sheep should be shorn before the farmer becomes busy planting his crops. This also prevents low-grade wool caused by a sheep running at large. It pays to have trained shearers, for they will know how to handle the sheep and wool without harmful effects. If the sheep are handled roughly, they can be hurt. While the animal is being sheared, it should be made as comfortable as possible. Shearing should always be done on a canvas or some protection on the floor or ground, so the wool will be clean. Each fleece should be rolled carefully, flesh side out. It should be tied with paper, not binder twine. The tags, or odd dirty pieces of wool, are collected and put in a separate container. These are put in a bag with the wool. The wool, now properly packaged and labeled, is taken to a central wool grading station, which is operated cooperatively. By marketing wool on an organized, graded basis, the quality has greatly improved. This fleece is full of spruce needles, chaff, and other vegetable matter. This can only be removed by the use of acids, which is costly and injures the quality of the wool fiber, while clean, healthy wool brings a good return. The different grades are placed in separate sacks and are branded according to grade for the protection of the buyer. When marketing time draws near, Dyer contacts Central through his local marketing organization. The local branch contacts the Central Marketing Agency. Central marketing is most effective when the bulk of the lambs are sold through them. It not only secures top markets, but cooperative buying helps the farmers get their supplies at a lower cost. On the day arranged by the local marketing organization, Dyer assembles his lambs so they will be ready when they are called for. A poorly managed flock is sometimes difficult to collect, but properly handled, they assemble very readily. By the time the cooperative truck arrives, Dyer's lambs are all ready to be weighed and taken to market. The scales are ready to be fitted on the end of the truck.
and one by one the lambs are checked for fleshiness and finish. This lamb does not weigh quite enough, neither has it enough finish. Rather than market it now at a loss, it will be kept a little longer to flesh out. Handling of lambs is important. The rope used for lifting is carefully put under the lamb's body so the flesh will not be bruised. Weighing the lambs before taking them to the grading station gives an idea whether the lamb is as heavy as it should be for top grade. Its live weight should be 90 pounds. Each lamb is tagged in the ear with a given serial number, which will identify it until it is marketed. The cooperative worker gives the farmer a statement showing number and weight of each lamb he is taking. Such records are important. They enable the farmer to know whether his flock is improving or falling off. The lambs are taken directly to the slaughterhouse. From this point on, the producer has no concern about marketing or worry over quality. He knows they are all well finished and fleshed out to meet market demands and there is a good market for them. So organized marketing on rail grading basis has led the way to a sheep improvement program beneficial to the sheep raisers of Nova Scotia. This program having proved beneficial to Nova Scotia is now adopted by Canada. The benefits of the new program are reflected in a number of rural high schools in Nova Scotia, particularly at Judic. Practical demonstrations of scientific methods of sheep care are given at this school regularly. In this way, the children, many of whom will be the farmers of tomorrow, will have a real knowledge of good farm management. This province is well adapted for sheep raising. Through the new program of marketing and good flock management, sheep husbandry can and will fill a much larger place in the agricultural life of Nova Scotia.